Hello chess friends! In this video you are going to witness what some have gone as far as to claim is the greatest game of chess that Magnus Carlsen has ever played. The year is 2015, the location is the Netherlands, and his very strong opponent is none other than the fourth highest rated player in history, Lavon Aronian, who at the time of this game was rated 2797, only slightly below his peak rating of 2830. But despite the strength of this formidable opponent, Magnus Carlsen is nevertheless able to dissect the position with surgical precision, isolating and playing against a slight weakness in Aronian's position until it is magnified to the point where he has a winning position which culminates in a beautifully executed tactical finish. So without any further delay, let's take a look at this positional and tactical masterpiece of Magnus Carlsen's. Magnus Carlsen begins with d4, we got knight f6 from Aronian, c4, e6, knight f3, d5, all very standard stuff, knight to c3, bishop b4, pinning the knight, Carlsen takes on d5, pawn takes, now bishop g5, pinning Aronian's knight. Aronian immediately puts the question to the bishop with h6. Now the most common thing for white to do here is just to back up with the bishop, maintain the pin, and at this point, black would have a number of decent options, including castling, or playing c5, or even g5, kicking the bishop back here, and then knight to e4, increasing pressure on this pin knight. But Carlsen doesn't allow any of that because he takes the knight on f6. And after queen takes f6, you might be thinking, well, what did that accomplish? Why should white give up the bishop for the knight? Well, in this line, white gets to maintain his lead in development, since he's not wasting a move with the bishop, backing up. And you can make the argument that now this queen is not on her most ideal post, since d5 has lost protection. And as soon as white castles and this knight is no longer pinned, the knight will be attacking that pawn. At this point, Carlsen plays queen to a4 check, also with an attack on the bishop. So the only move is knight to c6, defending the bishop. Otherwise, you're just losing the piece on b4. Also notice here that since black was forced to play knight c6, this means the c pawn is blocked. This is a key benefit to queen a4 for white, since black will not be able to challenge the white center with c5 anytime soon. Carlsen continues with e3, just looking to develop the bishop and castle, Aronian castles, and we got bishop to e2. You might be wondering why not bishop d3, isn't that more active? But in this case there's bishop g4 threatening to take on f3, so you'd have to address that some way. So it's just better to develop the bishop to e2 to avoid that threat. Bishop to e6, played by Aronian, adding some preemptive defense to d5. If he was to play bishop f5 instead, then after Carlsen castles, d5 is now under attack by the knight, since it's no longer pinned by this bishop. You could defend with the rook, but now queen b3, increasing the pressure. So Aronian's just preemptively defending. He realizes that this pawn is a little bit of a weak point. Carlsen castles. Now we got a6, because at this point, since this knight was no longer pinned, there was a threat of queen to b5. This would have a dual attack hitting the pawn on b7. Also, two pieces hitting the pawn on d5. So that is the main function of a6. Rook f to c1 played by Carlsen, and with this move, he's signaling that he's probably going to play on the queen side, leaving this rook on the a file. You know, if he wasn't planning on expanding with these pawns, then it would make more sense to put the rook over here. So this kind of gives us a clue as to the direction the game is going to take. Bishop d6 by Aronian. There wasn't much point in keeping the bishop on b4 anymore since it's not pinning this knight. So it moves to a more active post, eyeing the king's side, where it could be a useful attacking piece. Queen d1 by Carlsen. This clears the a4 square for the knight. There's ideas of getting the knight to c5. That would be a nice post. It also forms the queen and bishop battery, which may be useful in the future. Since black has a lot of pieces on the king side, he might get a good attack by playing g5, g4. If he can get a pawn on g4, that could be good. So this bishop in the future with the queen could defend against a pawn coming to g4. It also supports a future bishop to g4, as we'll see. So for those reasons, it's better to have the queen on d1 than on c2. Also on c2, it could be attacked with knight to b4, so it's a good move by Carlsen. We got knight e7 by Aronian. This move gets this knight out of the way of this rook because Aronian is thinking about playing b6, after which that knight would be vulnerable to capture by this rook. The thinking is after knight to a4, b6 can be played. 
to keep the knight off of c5. So Carlson doesn't go for knight a4 yet. He goes a3, getting ready for b4. So rook f to d8, just adding some indirect defense to d5. We got b4 from Carlson. Now he's got a couple of ways he could proceed on the queen side. He could play b5, or he could still go knight a4, threatening to come into c5. So Aronian deals with this by playing knight to c8. His thinking is that at this point, if Carlson were to play b5, he could take. And after knight takes, he could immediately play c6. And after Carlson captures on d6, now the knight can take on d6. That's better than having to take with the rook, because now the knight's eyeing some nice squares. So of course, Carlson doesn't go for that line. He says, all right, I'll go for knight to a4, since you made a weird looking move with your knight, underdeveloped it. I'm just maybe going to try to prove that that move wasn't so great. But Aronian does have b6 to stop knight c5. So Carlson says, that's all right, I'll go to b2, and now I can go to d3. Maybe eye up that e5 square. Aronian puts the knight back to e7, since it no longer had a purpose on c8. Knight d3 by Carlson. Knight to g6, played by Aronian. Looking to prevent knight to e5. Looks logical. The computer thinks that bishop f5 is better. Leaving the knight on e7 to support a possible c6. If the knight goes to e5, this isn't a big deal. Black can just put a rook here. And on the surface, it might look that white has gained some kind of positional victory by getting his knight to c6. But this fails tactically to knight takes c6. And if the rook recaptures, we got bishop takes h2. Discovered check on the rook. That rook will be lost. So for that reason, if the knight gets to e5, black can just let it hang out there. Play rook d to c8 and prepare to push this pawn. The value of black getting in the move c6, by the way, is that the pawn on d5 will have protection. You'll see how the weakness of this pawn becomes significant later in the game. So that was maybe a little better than knight to g6. Now Carlson plays a4, expanding further on the queen side, and at this point Aronian plays a5. He doesn't have a problem allowing the pawn structure to be locked over here, which is what happens after Carlson plays b5. This pawn's looking even weaker now. You know, with this pawn on b5, it's going to be harder to ever advance it, but it is defended by this bishop here. And then he puts the rook on the half-open file. Logical. Rook to c3. Carlson immediately starts doubling up on his half-open file. Bishop to f5 by Aronian, putting the bishop on a more active square. Opens up the line for the rook. Carlson doubles his rooks. Here Aronian plays rook a to d8. His plan is to put the rook to d7. Knight to d2 played by Carlson. Opening up the diagonal for the bishop, he's already thinking about how he can win this weak pawn. So Carlson's going to eliminate any potential defenders of this pawn, as you will see. Rook d7 by Aronian. Carlson could have immediately played bishop to g4 here, but I think he was a little bit worried about queen to h4. Threatening this with the bishop, threatening to win this bishop, but Carlson in this position could just take on f5 and win a piece, and black has nothing, because there's no checkmate. The king can start running, and he tries something like this, hitting the bishop, hitting this pawn, but then the bishop just goes here to h3. The black doesn't have anything worth losing a piece over in that line. But Carlson wanted to be extra careful, and he just plays g3, stopping any queen h4 in the future. Here Aronian plays a weird-looking move, knight to f8. It was not the best move. The computer says knight to e7, and after bishop g4, black should play g5 to keep a knight off f4 where it will be targeting the weak pawn. But the thinking with knight f8, I guess, is that after Carlson goes bishop g4, knight h7 carries the idea of going to g5 and maybe targeting these weak light squares. But Carlson knows this isn't a problem. He takes the bishop, queen takes f5, and now maybe Aronian here thought Carlson was going to play knight to f3, after which knight g5 is a strong move. But Carlson plays queen to f3, attacking the queen, which is defending d5. Aronian plays queen to g5 here. Doesn't go for the trade of queens. Keeping defense of the d5 pawn. Maybe the best chance here would be just queen takes f3. Knight takes. And again, knight f4 would be threatening the d5 pawn. So maybe g5 is best here. Knight e5 could be played attacking the rook. The rook moves. Knight c6. Rook e6. This is a computer line, but... White gets to plant his knight on c6, but maybe black will be okay. At least this pawn's not being lost. So 
might have been the best try, but after queen g5, Carlson immediately puts the question to the queen. Where are you going to go now? Queen e7, defending the rook. Now if Carlson tries to take that pawn, there's a discovered attack of some kind with this bishop opening up the attack by the rook, so obviously Carlson does not go for that. He plays rook to c6. You might wonder, what does that do? Well, there are some ideas after knight f6, which is what Aronian played, defending d5, of taking the knight on f6 if this bishop moves. So I'll show you that variation in a minute. Carlson plays knight to f4, hitting d5 with another piece. Aronian plays g6 to prevent any knight to h5, though it wasn't even possible for Carlson yet. If it were Carlson to move here and he played knight to h5, there'd be this tactic. Knight takes, queen takes, bishop takes g3, f takes g3, queen takes e3, check, picking up the knight. So it wasn't really a necessary move. If Aronian had tried bishop takes f4 here, we can see the purpose of the rook on c6 after queen takes. This move would give black some counterplay, attacking this pawn here, if not for rook takes f6. If black were to take the rook, now there's queen g4, check which picks up the rook on d7 after the king moves. Black could take the knight on d2, but after rook takes c7 with an attack on this pawn, white is winning. If instead black were to take the knight on d2 first, then the rook just gets out of danger. And now we got three white pieces hitting the pawn on c7. White is also winning in this variation. So it's a nice tactic behind this rook c6 move. But Aronian plays his g6, and obviously you still don't want to play knight takes d5, because after knight takes, knight takes, queen takes. Again, there's the discovered attack. You can take on g3, rook's hitting the queen. Carlson goes h5, attacking on g6. Aronian defends with the king. If instead you push with g5, looks like it might be good driving this knight away from a nice post, but here you actually can get away with knight takes d5. Because of the weakness, created around the black king. Here's the key variation. Knight takes, queen takes, and now if black tries the discovery with bishop takes g3, the queen can go to f3 and attack on the bishop. Rook is attacking h6. That wouldn't have been the case before g5 was played. Of course, you can block like this, but now the move is knight c4. Looking to just take out that bishop. Look at a couple lines here. Rook to c8. You got knight takes, rook takes, rook takes. This pawn's pinned take with the queen we got rook c6 i'm going to pick up that pawn alternative line rook e to d8 like that knight takes here but then this b6 pawn falls so that's not working out for black king g7 was the better move and now carlson takes on g6 f takes g6 and now grabs on d5 allowing knight takes d5 queen takes d5 bishop takes g3 but again we see the weakness of the black king come into play with queen to g2. Now it's not the h6 pawn that's in danger, it's the g6 pawn. After the bishop moves out of danger, blocking, it's important. You don't want white to capture on g6 with check, but knight c4, similar to what we saw in the line we just looked at. If the bishop moves, there's gonna be a capture on g6. Here, Aronian tries rook to f8, just getting the rook on an open file. It wasn't the best try, the engine likes queen to d8, clearing the way for rook h7. Here's the key line, knight to e5. You can take, allow queen takes g6, king goes here, and then when the queen takes on h6, you got the rook to put in the way with an attack on the queen. And actually black's winning here because look at the white king now. If that queen hadn't moved to d8, you would have had to put the queen in the way there. That would have been vastly inferior. White could just trade queens and would be the preferred side. But after Aronian's move rook to f8, again we see knight to e5, hitting g6, hitting the rook. At this point the computer says just play g5 and give up the exchange, allow knight takes rook. Aronian's lost whatever he does at this point. The attack is just starting to get too strong. He takes out the knight and allows the pawn to be captured on g6, just hoping he won't get checkmated. He moves the king to h8, but as we saw before, queen takes h6, check. And you actually can't even put the queen in the way because then you're losing the rook on f8. So you got to move the king. Pawn takes the bishop. Aronian takes out the pawn on e5. There's not really anything better. The black king is so weak. Carlson's king is wide open too, but Aronian can't really do anything about it. That could have really accomplished anything. 
you know, just trading queens like this would just be this rook move here. He would lose his queen. So queen takes e5 was really the best try, but now the rook comes into g6 with check, and the king's on the run. King to f7. We got rook to c4. Aronian goes for this queen to a1 check. Understandable to try to get some kind of counterplay here. Carlson plays king to g2. Now rook to h8 looks pretty scary with an attack on the queen. And if the queen moves, now you got the black rook and queen working together against the white king. But Carlson doesn't have to move his queen because he has a check. Rook f4 check. And now the computer saying this is a mate in 17. King e8 by Aronian. Rook to e6 check. Carlson finds the best move. Rook to e7. Carlson again finds the best move. Rook takes e7 check. Aronian takes with the king. And after rook to e4 check, Aronian resigns. If the king moves anywhere on the d file, let's say king d8, there's going to be rook d4 check, threatening to win that rook, blocking the queen's defense. You can try this. And obviously, if white were to capture the queen, now black's winning. But you don't have to capture the queen here. You can play queen to g5 check and then capture the queen. So that's what happens if the king goes to the d file. Let's say you go king d7 instead. You got the similar problem, except if the queen takes here, then we throw in this check. White's always going to have a check with that queen, so that's not working out for black anytime he goes to the d file. So where else can he go? If you try king to f7, this is a mate in 5. It goes like this, queen e6 check, king g7, rook g4 check, king f8, this, king here, rook f7 check, king here, queen e8 mate. Are there any other options? I think I covered all of Black's tries. So yeah, Aronian, he saw the writing on the wall. He had to throw in the towel. So I hope you enjoyed that masterful performance by Magnus Carlsen from 2015. Let me know in the comments if you think it's his greatest game he's ever played. And please subscribe to the channel for more quality analysis like this coming your way soon. Thanks for watching.